dropped out of a bridal party over usage of my exotic car, and that resurfaces years later. I was living in Lai ages ago. At the time, I had a 308 GTB that I had bought used and drove on weekends. It was my prized possession. I was asked to be a groomsman for a friend's wedding. This guy, Chuck, wasn't a particularly good friend but we got along. There were never any red flags with him prior to this. At tone point, maybe a month or two from the wedding, I was at some sort of wedding function, at someone's house, when someone made a comment to me about how generous it was of me, to let them take my Ferrari on their honeymoon. I was flooded by this, and the person who told me this said everyone knew, the bride had told everyone. The short story is she was telling people, I was letting them drive my Ferrari away from their wedding, and keep it for two weeks on their honeymoon. So I asked the bride about this, she said that she and my friend deserved it. They deserved to drive my Ferrari, from LA, to Napa Valley, for a two-week honeymoon vineyard hopping. I told her that I do not lend that car out to anyone, under any circumstance, and that I didn't understand why she was under the impression, that I was letting them take it. We deserve it and you'll let us take it. So at that point, I turned to my friend, and told him I quit then left. This was long enough ago that my answering machine blew up, with people calling me to air their grievances about what I do with my property. After being no contact with these people, they called me a couple of days before the wedding, and left a message asking for the car keys. They showed up at my door the night before the wedding, asking for the keys. They didn't get those keys. Sounds great, right? Maybe 10 years after this, I was working for a Silicon Valley-based tech company. This company had a big campus, and one Friday night I was at a barbecue. This friend and his wife showed up. It turned out he was working there too. I hadn't had any contact with them since the night before their wedding. His wife recognized me and started throwing a fit, identifying me as the person who ruined their wedding. This resulted in her spinning her tail in front of a crowd. Heads turned to face me and I told it as it happened. From that point, people started calling this former friend of mine, Car Keys. This got abbreviated to Carkey. If you ever worked with an unhappy looking man at a Fortune 500 tech company that people inexplicably called Carkey, this is why. Surely, they did not have support for their mania, did they? There had to be a voice of reason amongst your friends, at least a few folks, who didn't harass your phone machine. What a bunch of assholes. I really wasn't that close with this guy. I don't think I had ever hung out with him, outside of a group setting, so the whole thing was strange. The bridal party consisted of a couple of mutual friends, and his bride's friends. I think. I don't remember anyone actually saying anything to me, from the groomsmen's side, but I'm pretty sure none of the groomsmen, had called me to badger me. Maybe he wanted your car, so he asked you to be his groomsman. Anyway, what a ridiculously, entitled couple. Love that he got a nickname out of it. This is what I thought over the years. A lot of people thought I was rich back then, because of that car but, I sacrificed a lot to own it. I don't know that most people at the time, understood that. Even if you were rich, that doesn't mean someone can feel entitled to your car. Those people are crazy. Did the truth ever come to light? Did people ever find out, you never said they could use it in the first place? Do you know if the wedding people ever came to understand, they are crazy? Yes pretty much immediately. I don't remember the details now though. I wasn't in LA, long after that happened. Okay, so after writing this, I've been emailing a friend of mine about it, to reminisce, and he says he remembers us laughing while I was selling the car, about how funny it would be, if that former friend's wife, tried to buy it. I don't remember that though. I moved to the Bay Area not long after that, to work for a different company. I think one of the other groomsmen made me that job offer, after the wedding, so at least some of them must have known. No booze, no dancing, and absolutely no poor people please. My cousin's wedding, on my mom's side. Mom's siblings all have at least two to four kids each, so big Filipino family. Philippines is considered a developing country, and about half of my family don't enjoy a good standard of living. Three of the siblings live in the US, my mom, uncle, and aunt, and are middle class at best. Bride's mother is the only one living well in the Philippines, and she owns a very successful business, she would be the equivalent of middle class in the US. The other three second circumstances haven't changed much for the past five decades, just hard to break the cycle of poverty down there. My cousin is of the attention-seeking type. She loves social media, loves curating her feed, takes pictures for the likes, nothing inherently bad with that, but she took it way too far. This wedding was extra. She had seven photographers, two wedding video shoots from the top of some peaks in Canada before the wedding, a Filipino celebrity makeup artist hired for her and bridal party, two giant drones to take aerial photos, flower arches everywhere, and an expensive outdoor venue. She also had a Filipino celebrity talk show host, she hired for the reception. Antique sports car, rented for their wedding car, and photos. Now my cousin is not rolling in dough. She was raised in the Philippines, but moved to Canada, and naturalized a few years ago. She's a babysitter, and her fiancé does home health care aid. 
In order to rake in the money, she asked her mother for millions of peso. Philippines also has this tradition of wedding sponsors, where close friends and family will heavily contribute in exchange for getting a say in your wedding and being in the bridal party. So she had 50 people in her bridal party. When I flew home, days before the wedding, I found out, she invited all the US-based aunt, uncles and their families, but none of the Philippines-based aunts, uncles and their families, which was insane. These were all people she grew up with and showered her with love. Us who grew up, largely in US, maybe would shoot her a Facebook message every now and again, but we weren't close. Apparently, she thought that they were too poor and would ruin her photos and wouldn't be able to give much of a wedding gift anyway, so no use inviting them. I was flabbergasted and embarrassed because I had been talking to my non-invited family, saying how excited I was to hang out with the big family, only to find out that half of them weren't attending, which was super awkward. On to the actual wedding. I wasn't a wedding sponsor or in the bridal party because again we were not raised together and I wouldn't be able to coordinate efforts due to living in the US. But I got to the ceremony and there were like 10 people there, mostly my US-based cousins and me and my husband. It was a beautiful venue with empty seats because there was only a handful of us. I wondered if maybe people just RSVP'd no, but I found out later it was the full guest list. So the people invited were the 50 plus in the bridal party who gave her money, and the handful of US-based relatives, who could afford them a wedding gift. It was such a weird juxtaposition, to look behind and see 50 plus lines up before the aisle, and like 10 people sitting down. Literally took an hour to just have all these people be introduced, and walk down the aisle in pairs, and be seated. Nobody could hear the vows, because of the two gigantic drones literally hovering right by the pulpit to take photos, and the snap, 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 of the shutters of seven professional cameras. The reception was equally cringy. Her 50 sponsors decided there would be no alcohol, meat, no dancing. So instead they hired the Filipino celebrity talk show host to play Jeopardy with everyone. And since they wanted to look sophisticated, all the questions were based on US pop culture, which a ton of people didn't know about, so the games weren't even fun. She had this contest on who could post the best photo to her Instagram of her wedding, and the talk show host continued to allude to it. But most of the sponsors were older and didn't do social media, and the US-based cousins weren't exactly having a ton of fun, so maybe like four people posted. Philippines also has this tradition of pinning money on the bride's dress, and it was so cringy, not the tradition, but how it went down. Most of the people in her bridal party had already forked over large sums of money and didn't pin anything more, and the US-based relatives were either not very familiar with the tradition and felt it was awkward, so they didn't give money. Maybe four people pinned money to her dress while she was dancing around, and it was super awkward, since the announcer just kept announcing, be generous. It's the bride's special day, shower her with love. In Tagalog over and over again, until the song was over. Normally it's a really fun tradition, where all your friends and family cover you with money, from head to toe, but since since she already took that money up front, I guess there wasn't anything left to pin. I could go on and on, but I would end up writing an epic, so just gonna end it there. Basically, no one was happy or particularly enjoyed it, and everyone who forked over money was peed as hell when they split up in less than three months. I was only glad that aside from the airfare and a $100 cash gift, my wallet came away largely unscathed. Just goes to show that money doesn't buy class. I wanted to cry reading that. What an awful way to be. I know right. Culturally, in the Philippines, people live in extended family pods. Like literally siblings, would get houses next to each other, and your cousins would be like your siblings growing up, and your aunts and uncles like extra moms and dads. Kids were raised in a village-like setting, in lots of areas in the Philippines, which is how most people survived poverty, by banding together. Our families was no exception. Just imagine telling people, who are like your second parents and siblings, that they're not invited, because they're too poor. I'm sure she didn't say it like that to them, but I'm sure they got the picture, when they saw that the US-based relatives were invited, and they were not. I felt sick to my stomach when I found out. I'm hoping you took advantage of the wedding location, to visit with some of your uninvited relatives there. I did actually. Looking back at the photos I took, very few were of the wedding. Because I was so turned off, and most were chilling with my uninvited family, before and post-wedding. It was a blast, ate a ton of street food, did a lot of karaoke, my hubby sang with the neighborhood band, and we don't regret the trip at all, just attending the wedding lol. It can take a while to get your edited photos and video back, so in all likelihood, the couple broke up before they even got all their professional photos. Although it's possible, they paid extra to get them sooner, because I imagine the bride wouldn't want to wait that long to post it. Reading stories like this almost makes me regret that I don't know enough tacky people to be invited to their scandalous weddings lol. All that for only three months of marriage. Damn, those had better have been amazing photos. Speaking of which, I can't imagine how those photographers made it work, because, I'm guessing, there are only so many angles from which you'll get a good picture from each special moment. 
And even if you manage to coordinate that, or just let someone else take a specific shot, you'll want to keep the other six out of your shots as much as possible, and all those empty seats too. 50 lines of empty chairs. Why did they even order that many? I'm picturing six photographers rotating around the bride, like basketball drills, with one to two drones overhead, like a rain cloud in shows, movies, and one photographer taking pictures of everything else. I wonder if different people contributing wanted different photographers, but that had probably too generous to the bride in assumptions. For the chairs, I wonder if she tried to get some, or all of the bridal party to sit. All that for only three months of marriage. Damn, those had better have been amazing photos. OP sneaking that nugget in at the end made me laugh. I sure hope she got the clout she wanted so badly. Thanks for watching. I don't know which bride is more crazy. Expecting to borrow a friend's car without asking him, or having a wedding and not inviting your family, because they aren't rich enough. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos.